We're on page 33, lesson 20.1, connecting intercepts and zeros. And so far we've been talking about how to graph these quadratic functions and how to find the vertex and axis of symmetry. Now we're going to talk about kind of <coughs> some of the more um, distinct points that, that we want to uh, keep in mind when we're graphing these. Namely, the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. So, and and uh, the x-intercepts that are uh, also known as the solutions of the graph, usually. So, if there are solutions, by the way. So, um, let's jump into question one on page thirty-four. You can go ahead and read that um, explore and explain section on your own, as usual. And <coughs> jumping into question number one, we get this equation: x squared minus four equals negative three. So step one is we need to write that equation in standard form. So what that means is we want that we want that um, we want that negative three um, we want that negative three right here to uh, be <coughs> moved over into uh, to join the other the other uh, the expression there. So in this case, if we rewrite this. Um, let me, let me get some space over here. X squared minus 4 equals negative 3. What we're going to do is we're going to add 3 to both sides so that we can move that 3 over. So this goes away and we're, we get to X squared minus 1 equals 0. But this is what we're interested in and we're going to put that over here. X squared minus 1 uh, equals Y. So that becomes the function. Um, and if we were being a little bit more exact, it would be F of X equals X squared minus 1. But... Uh, that's beside the point. Let's go ahead and fill out this table for question uh, for step two. And so we're going to use the standard points we've uh, used so far: negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. And let's go all the way to three actually for this one. We don't need to, but we will. And then we're going to plug this in. X squared. We're going to plug it in there. Okay. X squared. Uh, negative two squared is four. Four minus one is three. And then let's do the negative one. Negative one squared is one. One minus one is zero. Uh, let's plug in the 0. Uh, 0 squared is 0. 0 minus 1 is uh, negative 1. And then uh, and then it's symmetrical, right? 0, 3, and then with this one we, we need to do as well. Uh, 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 1 is 8. Okay, so, um, and then let's graph this. So, when x is negative 2, it's 3. When x is negative 1, it's 0. When x is... 0, we're at negative 1, and again, symmetrical like this, and then 3 is going to go all the way to 8, and that's off the graph, so we're not going to actually do that. So let's do something like that, and something like that. Okay, and then, okay, so find the zeros or the x-intercepts, if any. So there are two x-intercepts, one right here and one right there, uh, and the one on the left is, what is that, negative 1, comma 0, Oh my god, I don't know what I'm doing. Negative 1, comma 0, and this one is 1, comma 0. So the x-intercepts are negative 1 and 1. So uh, let's see. The solutions are x equals negative 1 and x equals 1. Okay? So um, that's that. Um, you can go ahead and read that explain 4 section on your own as well, but now we're going to solve... Uh, questions that are kind of in uh, that have a context to them and in this case we have <coughs> the height and feet of a projectile with an initial velocity of 96 feet per second modeled by the function uh, h equals negative 16 t squared plus 96 t where t is the time in seconds so um, question a they want to find the height of the projectile each second after it's fired into the air and so if we take a look at the graph right it'll inform what we what we want as the domain values here you see 0 through 7 so those are what we're going to use as the domain values actually so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 and so <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to plug those values into the equation to get the resulting um, uh, f of t values, or in this case, they're, they're going to be the values of um, the height and feet above the ground of the projectile. So um, let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to plug in 0 into basically this equation. Um, and 0 is going to scrub everything clean. So um, anything times 0 is 0. So both of, those have t both of those terms have t's in them. So 
it ends up being zero. And then if you do that with one, two, three, four, and five, so on and so forth, um, let's see, after one second, uh, one squared is one, one times negative 16 is negative 16, negative 16 plus 96 is gonna be 80, okay? And um, after two seconds, uh, we're gonna plug two in there, two squared, so where are we plugging that in? We're plugging it in here. Two squared is four. Four times negative 16 is negative 64. Negative 64 plus, uh, what's 96 times two? Uh, two, uh, 192. So if you add those together, you get a, or 128. Uh, and by the magic of my using the answer key, uh, just to save time, these are what you should end up with. Okay, and we're going to stop at 6 because presumably it's going to hit the ground at 6, right? We're at 6, we're at 0 feet again. So it's not even worth doing 7 because uh, the projectile is not going to go under the ground. Uh, or at least not at the same rate. So it looks like the highest point is right here at 3. So uh, they want you to interpret the values in the table. Well, okay, after zero seconds. Uh, the projectile is zero feet in the air. Okay, and then uh, just because I'm lazy, after one second, um, 80 feet in the air. Oops, I don't know what I'm writing there. Um, in the air, after two seconds, 128 feet in the air. After three seconds, 144 feet in the air. After four seconds, 128 feet in the air. So it's coming back down. After five seconds, 80 feet in the air. After six seconds, zero feet in the air. Let's graph this. So zero zero is right here. One comma eight is right there. Two comma one twenty eight is almost to the one thirty, but not quite. So right there. After three is at one forty four, so almost halfway up. Then coming back down and right here, and then at, at zero when it's when it's six. So. Oh man, I'm going to butcher this curve. Something like that. Right? So use the graph of the model to determine how long the projectile is in the air. Well, it hits the ground at 6 seconds. So the projectile is in the air for 6 seconds.